So how I get the groove started in the soapstone is I actually etch it in with another stone. And I'll be working three different materials. I'll make several different tools. So I have a piece of green jasper here. Some of the locals actually refer to that as uh, bloodstone. I think they get it misunderstood with argillite, which I'm wearing around my neck. But either way, it'll make uh, points and the local natives out here definitely use this as a tool. And then I found a big quarry of this up by the upper Verde River in Paulden. And this is some kind of either mudstone or rhyolite, but I actually started chipping it and it'll definitely make a tool. I also have a piece of obsidian. I've been working this into a projectile point, but I think I'll use this for the soapstone and uh, I'll have to work that down a bit. I have a piece of leather and then a pressure flaker if I need it. For the obsidian, I'll definitely need it. Maybe even uh, the jasper and the rhyolite. We'll see what we can get. So I'm just gonna knock off a couple flakes here. And that's decent. Here's another one. I can definitely use that. You can see how that tip is nice and sharp. Yeah, here's some nice good flakes. And we'll go for one more. Another one, and an even larger flake. Here's that jasper. You can really hear that, it sounds like glass. Couple small flakes, I can use that. It might be a little bit big. We'll see what we can do. I might be able to reduce that. This will definitely work. So for the obsidian, all I'm going to do is create a point at this tip. And again, I can use that to etch into the surface. And I just pressure flake this. And here's our stone tools we can use. This right here is additional. This is a large biface that I've been working. And this would actually do a really good job on this soapstone, but I wanna turn it into a large spear point. So I'll just set this to the side. But it's thick enough, like I said, to where it'll really dig in through this material uh, with quite enough force to etch out a line and start off with. So I'm gonna discard this. This is a little bit thick. I decided not to work it down, but all these tools will absolutely do the job. So you can start off by just carving a line into the stone and get it wider and wider as you go. And then here's that obsidian, that smaller obsidian point. And that works quite well. So obsidian is a really glassy material and it's not as strong as something like jasper or flint or even this mudstone or rhyolite. But 
this soapstone is so soft, the obsidian can dig in with ease. It doesn't take that much work. Well, you can see our stone is pretty well complete and it's time to finalize this project. So there's a few things that I need to do. The first thing is sand the inside of this groove and then I'll add decorations to both sides. And then finally, I'll seal the stone off using a bear fat. So to sand the inside of this groove, you have a few different options. The first thing is of course sandpaper. That's the quickest, that's the easiest. Or you can take your arrow shaft or your arrow four shaft along with a fine sand. Usually I go for river sand. I just scoop it out of the bottom of the river. It's super, super fine. Beach sand works as well. And wet the stone, throw the slurry on the inside of the groove and just run the shaft back and forth. And that'll smooth it out and it'll add a nice polish. But what I'll use is something called equisetum and this is like a natural sandpaper it grows pretty abundant out here especially in riparian zones I'll just wet the stone and I'll run this back and forth that'll smooth out this groove and it'll add a really nice polish on the inside 